Good morning, Dr. Gary on the road again. We are dental practice brokers and we sell dental practices. We put make the union between the buyer and the seller and we put those together. We've been doing this for 11 years now. I was a dentist for 25 and um, we're moving forward. We're in 16 states now and we are excited. Our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. Our phone number is 201-663-0935. Please give us a call. We work 363 days a year. We take off Christmas and Easter. We're always available to you. In fact, the only time we don't answer the phone is when I'm swimming in the ocean or flying. So please call us and we can chat about any topic you want in the selling of dental practices or the purchasing of dental practices. Our number is 201-663-0935. Website, doc, uh, website is dentalpracticeguide.com. So anyway, moving along, we try to bring you real-time, up-to-date, today's information of the events would happen out there. Since we work seven days a week, it is constantly moving in the sale of dental practices. So what happened, yes, and by the way, this is for entertainment purposes. Do not use it for legal advice or business advice. Speak to your professionals. The So this happened yesterday. I got a phone call. It took almost three years to sell this doctor's practice. Three years. The title of this segment is three years to sell a dental practice. Why so long? Well, they generally don't take that much time. Usually six to 12 months, six, uh, six to nine months, you've gone to closing and completion, sometimes significantly faster. Our fastest we've ever done, I think was 10 days to closing. And then another one, we went to, uh, it took like two and a half years. It was crazy, it's all different circumstances. Majority of them will sell six to nine months, it's sold. If it's a hot practice, it'll sell faster than that, sometimes right away. But anyway, this was an extraordinary one, but it did take a long time. Um, the situation was this, it was a bit unique. The doctor had to move out of his present building because the building got condemned and was going to be they had to do structural, all kinds of structural problems, foundation problems. There was no way he was moving back there. It was going to take way too long. Contaminated building, just forget it. Had to move out. So we moved in with a buddy of his, not too far away, about a, two miles away from his office. And he became a subletter. Um, it worked out well because he's only working part time. Significantly reduced his overhead for rent. And he just got used to it. And the practice didn't grow much. It was like, you know, he's only doing it part time, but it was still a lively practice and he did have some pretty good skills. So it took, uh, he was there for about two, three years. And at that time he didn't want to start another office. He didn't want to go, he just like, kept subletting. Um, but then, you know, it was time to move on. So he essentially was selling patient records, which you think would be easier. But the problem was nobody wanted to pay for them up front. Everybody wanted to pay upon income. That is pay a percentage of the dollars that came in and they wanted to work for him. He was not comfortable with that. And we kept getting offers like that again and again and again. And then finally, uh, we found somebody and then they, we almost went to closing. Contracts are going back and forth. Buyer got cold feet. He was afraid. Well, he wasn't aware of the transition. And at this point, the price had already been reduced to like 25% of gross. Again, this is a record sale. He's moving from one place to another. So that whole process of trying to sell the records and finally getting somebody and he waiting for him to get financing and then he got delayed and he said he wasn't ready. Then we were finally ready. That took over six months. So finally, we were gonna to go to closing, the deal fell apart because the buyer got closed. Now we're almost at seven months. The doctor got you know, frustrated and we put it back on the market, but there weren't that many people in that region that you know wanted the records because you only, if it's a record sale, you want it to be relatively close to your office. 
So then we put it on the market and another period of time went by, almost another year. So now we're at one year and seven months. Finally, it started to pick up again. We started to market it, market it, market it. And you know, we tried to help them out. Obviously, this wasn't a big money maker for us. Practice is only grossing like 275. But we were trying to help them out. And um, so it went, there was about a, a year and seven months had gone by. And we tried marketing it again and again. Uh, it wasn't moving. And then we went through another cycle where we did have people interested. They did want to finally buy it. Uh, we, of course, lost time through the pandemic. So you lost another four or five months right there. So that put us at about, God, that put us at like at two, two and two and a half years or two years and two months, somewhere around there. So we're at two years and two months at that point. Then we started marketing it again. So finally, yesterday, finally, the deal closed, bringing us to almost three years. And it was crazy. These things do happen on lower cost practices. It shouldn't go this long, but sometimes people ask, well, how long is it gonna to take to sell? The answer is six to nine months usually. That's from start day one to finish. The shortest I've done it is 10 and a half days. Um, it did actually happen. Uh, the longest used to be two and a half years one took, but um, the circumstances are always different. But you do have a circumstance here, it took three years, but he finally sold it. And that does happen sometimes. If you have a low grossing practice, it's tough. Now we just sold another one with real estate in it building. That took a year and a half, close to two years. So lower grossing, it will take you a long time. Um, so once again, the title here, why did it take three years to sell my dental practice? Each circumstance is different. But if you have a lower grossing practice, I think the real message is you've got to get that practice on the market much earlier than you think. May, under the worst circumstances that in your mind, you sell it rapidly. Well, okay, you delay the closing or maybe you work for the doctor. Um, but if you're lower grossing practice, give yourself two years at least because it may take sometimes really long despite how much marketing, advertising, website. And we market them like crazy. We're on multiple platforms. We answer the phone 24 seven. We support the buyer. We vet the buyer before they come in. We get them the financing. We get the buyer and sell it together with the right attorneys. We prepare the buyer by pre-qualifying him at one of the top dental top dental banks. We get the buyer with the top uh, and seller with top dental attorneys, two separate attorneys, of course. But I mean, it just goes on and on sometimes. It lingers and lingers and lingers. So put your practice on the market. We're here to help you. We'll market it. We'll advertise it. You as sellers, it doesn't cost you anything in the beginning. There's no upfront cost. We don't charge anything for the buyers, nothing for the sellers. There's no cost at all to get the process started. Uh, we could do all the marketing for you to get it rolling, and there's no cost to you. It's just our commission at the end. But we'll set up. You have all our expertise. We'll work closely with you. Just put this deal together. I mean, that's it. We are ready to help you and get it started. But give yourself plenty of time, at least two years, if you have a small practice that the gross is low and uh, it doesn't look like, you know, it's, it's moving that fast. Just give yourself that time period and you should be okay. It'll eventually will sell. Somebody's going to buy it. Under the worst circumstances, it becomes a record sale. And um, usually we're able to move that as, we, uh, as time goes on, get it done. Either way, we're here to help you. Let us know if we can help you at any time. Just call us. We have the experience, the time uh, to help you, and we'll put in the dedication. Where possible, we try to be there when we show the practices also. Not just send people on visits to see you. We'd like to be there. And uh, we'll show up myself or one of my uh, CPA accounts. We'll try to be there when possible. We are in different states, so we always can't be there all the time, but we try. Um, and this represent you as the seller and accompany the buyer. So thank you for listening.